What's up everyone, John Brender from Techno Buffalo here with a full review for you of this guy, the Nexus 5, the latest from Android, rocking a delicious, deliciously named KitKat. I put it through its paces and let's see if this sexy Nexi is worth your hard-earned buying buck. I, I shouldn't have said that. When we came out of my mouth, I knew it sounded bad. So as I do with all my reviews, I want to give a disclaimer. I use this as my daily driver for three days. I tested it on AT&T's network in Southern California, though it is unlocked and it'll work with T-Mobile or Sprint. So first, talk about call quality. It doesn't matter what the phone's got, and if it's not gonna make a good phone call, it's not gonna be of much use to you. Uh, as with all modern smartphones now, call quality is actually pretty awesome. The microphone, as we'll talk about, is really, really incredible. Speakerphone, because of those dual speakers on the bottom, was really loud. No one had any problems hearing me. I had no white noise, no popping. So overall, pretty awesome. The phone is built by LG, and they did a really, really nice job with it. I really liked the soft touch back, although it is a little bit of fingerprint magnet. It just felt sturdy in my hand. It didn't feel heavy, but it felt really significant. So you get the sense that you're using really a premium device. I also really liked a hidden notification link. If you look at the phone when it's off, you'll never notice anything is on the very bottom. But get the notification, get an email or something, it's gonna start blinking at you, and I really liked sort of how subtle it was. The SIM tray is located right below the power and lock button, which sure looks like a volume rocker, which it's not, that was on the other side which I found a little bit annoying, but that's super nitpicky. I still prefer physical buttons to, you know, on-screen buttons, or at least one home button and two soft ones. But from reading the comments last time I said that, I know that I'm the minority, and this one definitely has soft buttons uh, on the screen. On paper, that 4.95 inch 1920 by 1080 screen should be freaking baller. After all, it's got a PPI of 445, and it's made by LG. I love LG screens. In fact, I thought the screen on the G2 was one of the best in the mobile industry, and that says a lot. However, the screen on the Nexus 5 viewing images looked kind of washed out to me. Not to say it's bad, just not as sharp as the S4 or the G2. But not being the absolute best isn't always the worst. The screen's still pretty good. Text looks great. Video and game still look pretty decent. Surprisingly though, visibility and direct sunlight was okay. I put this side by side with a device like the Moto X and the screen didn't look that much better than the 720p screen on the Moto X. So I wouldn't buy this expecting to get the most gorgeous display. I pick up this phone if you want a really well-rounded package. If this phone was an Olympian, it would run a three minute mile. It absolutely screams. You'd expect that though from a phone that's got a Snapdragon 800 processor, two gigs of RAM and an OS and KitKat that was designed for efficiency. So let me just get this out of the way because I know you guys want to know the Quadrant score. It is 7,234, and I am well aware it's not the most scientific way to benchmark a phone, but I do use it in all my Android devices, so at least you can compare it. I had to do no memory management at all with this phone. It's got two gigs of RAM. Scrolling was super fast, whether you're you know, in apps or on a browser. Uh, apps loaded really quickly, and games just as fast. It was a really fast phone. You're gonna forget that you have to worry about memory management. You forget how many gigs of RAM you have. It's just gonna work and work really well. And that's probably the best compliment you can give a phone. Sure, the specs fade into the background. You can focus just on the experience. Let's talk a little bit about the delicious KitKat. We did a whole video on it, but there are some really nice tweaks. I do like the fact that you can scroll in from the side to get to Google Now. I don't like integration of Hangouts with SMS, but the nice thing about Android, if you don't like it, just download a new SMS app and save it as your default. KitKat felt really, really quick to me. I didn't notice anything giant that was in there, but I did like how quickly it ran. I did notice a little bit of speed difference on comparing it to the Nexus 4. That might be because of the hardware and because of the operating system, but either way, it just feels fast. I don't usually talk that much about cameras in my reviews because no, honestly, it's not that important to me. The pictures look fine when I take a picture of my baby and I can put it on Facebook and that's really all I care about. But I've read the comments and you guys want me to talk much, much, much more about cameras. Putting images on video aren't gonna do them justice. So if you wanna see the article again, link's gonna be down below to go ahead and check that out though. I will say though, the mic when you're recording video is awesome. Probably the best I have ever heard, like really surprising. We've used a lot of mics when we make our videos, whether it's a boom mic or a lav mic or whatever it might be. But this little tiny microphone on this phone was really, really incredible. So a phone with specs like this, you might not expect it to last you the entire day. It's especially one of the tiny 2300 milliamp hour battery. I do my battery tests a bit differently than other sites. I don't run it on video and see how long it lasts till it dies. I use real world tests. So let me tell you how my day goes. Give it a full charge. Put off the charger around 7, 7, 15 in the morning. It's always connected to Wi-Fi there in my house or at the office where I am 80% of the day. I make about two to two and a half hours of phone calls. Uh, pretty aggressive, probably more than it should be. Social networking, so I'm on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, posting pictures and just reading comments. Probably about 45 minutes to an hour of video, probably about a half hour to 45 minutes of gameplay going on. Constantly pulling down two email accounts, 
uh, on push, so always regularly checking. Uh, widgets that are on the home screen that are pulling in for down information every 30 minutes. End of the day, I had about 30%, which is not great, but it's not awful. And for me, the big test for battery life, but then I can get through a whole day. And the fact that I could get through a whole day was all I needed from a phone. I don't expect to go two, three, four days, especially not a phone. It's got a 1080p screen, a quad core processor. It's just not realistic. So it's fine. I got through a whole day, which is the best I could expect. Uh, would I have liked to have had 40 or 50%? Yeah, absolutely. But as long as it's not going to die on me, I'm totally fine with that. So there are some other intangibles that don't fit in any category, I don't think, for the Nexus 5. The first one, and probably one of my favorite, wireless charging. It is here. I love that it just built it. I don't have to buy another case, not to buy a new backplate. It just works. And I'm definitely talking to you, Samsung and Nokia. The fact that I can throw this thing on my Qi charger and have it work is absolutely awesome. And even better with the new versions of Android. You could charge it wirelessly while it's powered off, which I really like. I enjoy turning my phone off at night. It's kind of a ritual for me. It's like unplugging. So we'll get the latest versions of Android pretty much as soon as they come out. So 4.5 or 5.0, whatever comes next. I love naked, unadulterated Android. It is a beautiful bit of awesomeness rolled into one package of hugs. I just like it. I like the way it looks. I like the way it works. I like the way Android designers have it. Not to say the skins are a bad way to go, but I prefer pure Android over anything else. So what's the final score for the Nexus 5? On our Techno Buffalo test, it gets a 8.5. It lost a little bit uh, for the screen, but overall a really incredible phone and an awesome package. If you want the latest that Android has to offer, you want a phone you're gonna be sure is gonna get OS updates, and even better, a phone maybe you don't have to sign a two-year contract for. This is a great way to go. It's a killer price point uh, right now, either 349 or 399, depending on 16 or 32 gigs. I wish I had expandable storage and things like that, but I can live with it for a really, really killer price and an awesome package. If you want to get a new smartphone, you want one of the best out there. Nexus 5 is going to be a great way to go. So thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Please give the video a thumbs up. We we'll definitely appreciate it. Until next time, I'm John Renger from Techno Buffalo. See you next video. What's up, everyone? John here. Thank you for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, I certainly hope you did. Click on the subscribe button right under me in my pants region to get tons more tech videos from Techno Buffalo. We've got awesome unboxings, comparisons, reviews, recaps, and everything else you can think of in the tech world right here on the channel. Join the herd today. If you want to check out some more content, just click right over this way to see some other recent videos. See you guys next time.